Okay, so here on your notes, there's a question about gas law on page 27. Pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. Part A. The answer should be PV equals to PV1122. To play safe, because they also mention pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, then I will also put down a constant. Okay, and if you don't understand why they said fixed amount of gas at constant temperature, you should go back to look at the previous video. So for part B, they give you some data. Just imagine these are the data that you have got from the virtual lab, the Boyle's Law simulation that you did earlier. And the question is asking you, how can you tell from the data uh, that the temperature was constant throughout the experiment? And so of course, the first thing that you should see is when you multiply each of these sets of data, uh, whether or not they will give you the fixed number, just like the previous simulation activity. So for this one is 5000, this one also, well 5000 basically. This one, yeah, should be 5000 also, you can use your calculator. This one also, and this one also, so it's always 5000. So what you can say about it is, according to each set of data, the product, that means when you multiply them, the product of pressure and volume is always a constant bracket 5000 and this can only uh, be achieved or can only be true if and only if the temperature was constant throughout the experiment according to Boyle's law. Part C is a very standard Boyle's law question with a tiny tweak so what happened is they have given you P1 and P2 initial pressure and uh, final pressure instead of giving you volume they have given you the position okay 75 millimeter is like the length uh, of the space but then this is a cylinder and uh, when you push or move the piston the cross-sectional area is still the same so it doesn't really matter um, the volume how much volume it is because the area is always a constant and so what you can say about it is you can still state the equation p1 equals to sorry pv equals to pv and then for p1 you can substitute and for v1 what you can do is you can say a which is the area times 75 equals to p2 which is just copy and then uh, V2 would then be A and the new length okay and then find out the answer and obviously A is cancelled on both sides and so eventually you should find out L to be 30 and that should match with the unit you have for the distance here so millimeter however one thing that you you have to be very careful is what happened is was simply it was 75 millimeter for the length and now you it becomes shorter of course with the same area 30 millimeter but then the question is actually asking you how much it moved so uh, that would be 75 minus 30 because 30 is how you how much you have at the end so that will simply be 45 millimeter. So this is the distance that you moved.